um, this this will be a a pretty solemn beginning to an episode. Uh, I think, as we've all heard, um, there were Mormons, or let, well, let's start with this. There were some Americans that were in Mexico, and they didn't make it back to the United States. This is from um. This is from CNN, and this is, ah, oh, this. This hurts, man. This hurts. Okay. Um, nine Mormon women and children were shot and burned alive in an ambush near the U.S.-Mexico border. Oh, my God. Okay. Nine members of a Mormon family were killed on the Mexican side of the U.S.-Mexico border, and authorities are investigating whether the attack was the result of mistaken identity. The slain victims include three women, four small children, oh God, and two infants. Family member Alex LeBaron said from Mexico, he said all nine were dual U.S. Mexican citizens. The victims were all shot while in, ve in ve shot while all shot while in vehicles while driving. LeBaron told CNN. Investigators believe three vehicles traveling between the Mexican states of Sonora and Chihuahua were ambushed by criminal groups Monday evening, Mexican authorities said. Oh my god, this... Women and children between 14 years old and 10 months were massacred, burned alive, LeBaron said. Mothers were screaming for the fire to stop. Dear god. Oh, there's a... Uh, there's a picture of the car that they were in or maybe just or maybe one of the cars i don't know how many they were carrying um but this thing is charred up i mean yeah it's 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 a it's a bad look um security minister alfonso durazo said the attack could have been a case of mistaken identity of conflicting groups in the area um, seven injured children are now in the U.S. The Mormons' attack appear to be members of a fundamentalist sect that is separate from the mainstream Church of uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, an LDS church spokesman said. This sounds like a terrible and tragic thing, spokesman Eric Hawkin told CNN. As what I can tell you, they were members of a polygamous sect, not members of the Church of, the, of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, in case you don't know too much about um, Mormons and Latter-day Saints, um, there it used to be common uh, for Mormons to marry, for Mormon men to have many wives. Um, I don't remember the exact year where that where that stopped happening, but there are Mormons who do still do that. Um, but it's a, it's a small percentage. Um, seven children injured from the ambush were flown from Mexico to Douglas, Arizona for transport to Tucson Air to Tucson hospitals, LeBaron said. Sonora State Governor Claudia Pavlovich Ariano, Ariano, Ariano said she was outraged by the attack. As a mother, I feel angry, scorn, and a profound pain for the cowardly events in the mountains between Sonora and Chihuahua. I don't know what type of monsters would dare to hurt women and children. As governor, you have all my collaboration so that this doesn't remain unpunished and the responsible parties pay. The U.S. State Department is aware of the attack, an agency spokesperson said. When a U.S. citizen is missing or passes away overseas, we engage with local officials at multiple levels and provide all appropriate consular assistance, the spokesperson said. Um... And now here comes the criticism of Mexico, both from the article and some from me, but mostly from the article. A region marred by violence. As Mexican authorities grapple with violence in the region, the number of killings keeps soaring. Last year, Mexico witnessed its highest number of homicides, 33,000, and 2019 is on course to break that record. Just... Listen to this. Just last month, 
13 Mexican police officers were killed in an ambush in the western state of... Oh boy. You know I'm taking a Spanish class right now, but I'm probably going to butcher this. M Mahokan. Michokan. Mahokan. I'm going to go Mahokan. I don't know. Um, now, gr now, grief from the latest high-profile massacre has spread across two countries. Let me just say this, man. I, I have never, ever, ever in life had any desire to go to Mexico. I don't. Not just because... Not just not just due to the safety factor. Um, but simply due to... How can I put this? I think when you have a situation of violence and high homicide rate and um, high crime... It's just, it's it's not a desirable desirable place at all. There are just certain places that I wouldn't go, and I can't I can't think of any reason. I can't think of any reason that I would willingly, on my own, on out of my own unction and function, to go to go to Mexico. There's just there's just no desire there. There are so many other places I would rather go. I'm just this is this is a sad um this is a sad event, man. This is this is oh this is a sad event. I just I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. This this is just it hurts me. Because, because this shouldn't be. They were in here just for. I, I'm going. I'm going to assume vacation. I'm going to assume vacation. Um. But this this just this just hurts me. And this should hurt. Not just not just Americans. This should hurt mankind. This this should this should hurt this should hurt everybody. This is wrong on multiple levels. And Mexico, I'm I'm gonna tell you something. You guys are you guys are a corrupt nation. Um now many many dec a few decades ago you guys were way worse. You have improved. You have improved. But you still have a long way to go. Get it together over there. And this... See, what, what's sad about this... What's sad about this... Is when you have these people... With... Um, you have these people who come across the Mexican border... And they have this... There is this stigma that um, a lot of them are criminals and a lot of them are these just horrible people and this story right here is there's going to be someone who reads this and they're going to be like see this is why we shouldn't let people in from Mexico and I'm not you know I'm not one for that I say I believe in legal immigration so I believe People who legally come here should be allowed in, and that's that's from any country, not just not just Mexico or Canada or Australia, Britain. If you come here legally, I'm okay with it. I'm perfectly acceptable. Welcome in. Wherever you are from, I do I, I'm I am against them coming in illegally. It's wrong. You are break. You're breaking the law. You can't just do that. And this and listen, this is not just America. 
this is this is for any country. If you enter any country illegally, you get deported or you get jailed or you get tortured or there are many things. But certainly, certainly the least the least that could happen is that you are deported. And this this just hurts relations between the US and Mexico right now. This hurts. Um, my, my condolences to the family, the families, the friends, this is, this is just a disgusting act. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm praying they get these guys, but I'm telling you, it's Mexico. They're not going to get them. They're, they're just not going to get these people. Okay. Um, next story. Okay, so we got two, you know what? No, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this. So have any of you ever seen Charlie's Angels? The real Charlie's Angels, not, not this new feminist garbage, not, not this. But the original one. Because let me tell you something, man. That's a good show. It's a good show. And Charlie's Angels star, Jacqueline Smith, says she never felt exploited over her sexy image. Now, this is a huge statement. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through the article, or as much of it as I can. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to comment because this is a huge thing that needs to be understood. And I think we're failing to understand this in society. Okay, Jacqueline Smith says she never felt anything less than heavenly while on the set of Charlie's Angels. The 74-year-old actress starred as a sultry private eye Kelly Garrett in the hit series that aired from 1976 to 1981. The show, which chronicled the adventures of a wealthy mystery man named Charlie, who runs a detective agency via a speakerphone, Starred David Doyle, Farrah Fawcett, Kate Jackson, and Cheryl Ladd. Smith told UK's Daily Mail on Monday that while they were while there were a lot of bikinis in the show, she never felt exploited. I would have walked away if I felt that, said Smith. In my heart of hearts, I knew who I was. However, not everyone felt the same way. The feminists didn't like us because they said we were Barbie dolls prancing around. She reflected, we wore pretty things, but we didn't flaunt our sexuality. It wasn't salacious. Still, there are plenty of reasons for audiences to be captivated by the angels. And that is so true. If you, have, if you haven't seen this show, let me keep reading. For Far was, a, was this luscious pinup but very innocent, Smith explained to the outlet. Kate was cerebral and outspoken. I remember being described as a soft cushion between analytical Kate and flashy Farrah. Farah. According to Smith, the actresses became rock stars overnight and Charlie's Angels was consistently rated in the top 10 drama shows both in the United States and Britain. The women also received thousands of letters a week and guards were even stationed outside their hotel rooms. We had a nut file, uh, ch Smith chuckled, and there were some restraining orders put out for me against fans. One person delivered the same letter every day for a year. The outlet shared producer Aaron Spelling was originally looking for a redhead to balance Fawcett, a blonde, as well as brunette Jackson when Smith was cast. However, the producer quickly won over, was won over by Smith's chemistry with the two other stars. Despite Smith's success, she endured some private obstacles along the way. By the time she was 30, the actress was already divorced from the first, from the first of four husbands, actor Roger Davis. Her second marriage to Dennis Cole ended in 1981 after just three years. Okay, now we're getting into her personal life. But, I've covered what I needed to cover. Listen, often, often now we talk about, you know, these people who are quote-unquote exploited in Hollywood and modeling and stuff like that. You know, here's what we have to understand. These people are paid. These are people's jobs that they willingly do. 
you have to under, you have to understand that they are willing they these people are willing participants willing paid participants in these activities and that is extremely important because you have this idea of well, let me just say this if you are if you truly believe you're being exploited if you seriously believe you're being exploited, quit. Just quit. Just quit working in that sector. Like, like I, I listen to these people, and this this kind of ties into me too. But I, I'm going to go here. If you truly believe that you are being exploited, just, you know, let it go. Just. If, if you believe you're just being excluded for your sexuality and your looks and, you know, you're not being treated fairly, I just say this. Quit and go work a different job. Seriously. But these but most of these people, they don't they don't do that. They stay in the industry. Why? Because it probably because it pays well. They like the fame. Um. They may be passionate about it, maybe not. It may be the only thing that they're good at. But I was having a conversation with um with a feminist. What's it? It must have been. It was probably. It was probably this time last week. So pr- about six or seven days ago, and we were talking, and we got to the. Um, I asked her. I said. I said. So. I said, so how do you feel about, you know, models? And she said, I think it's, she said, I think it's disgusting. And, and just, you know, just to give you some context of our relationship, her and I are really cool. We have opposing views on many things, including me too. And she's, she's, uh, she's one of my biggest critics on that, but we're still, you know, good friends and we can laugh and we can talk about other stuff. So, you know, just just saying. Um you know, you have these people and I, I well, I asked her. I said, "What do you feel, how do you feel about modeling?" And she said, "I think it's disgusting and I think it's wrong that you know, there are people who are celebrated simply because of their looks." And I said, I said, I said, "Why is that?" I said, why is that disgusting? How come, how come we can celebrate people for their intelligence? We can celebrate people for their achievements. We can celebrate them for, we can celebrate them for almost anything else, but you can't celebrate them for their looks. And she said, because it's not fair. And I said, why isn't it fair? She said, well, because you have people who aren't good looking and you have people who, there's nothing you can really do about looks. And a lot of people, you can improve your looks if you have a lot of money. And I said, yeah, that's a good point. And so I and so I and so I asked her, I said, okay. So intelligence isn't really fair. There are people who are a lot smarter than others. And there are some people who are just who just have rocks for brains. And I said, should we start celebrating people for their intelligence? And she fell silent. And she said, well, I guess not. My point is, you know, you have people, you have people who they, these, these, these women are paid a lot. These women are paid a lot of money and they're, they're willing to do it. So this is a list from 2017 of the highest paid uh, Victoria's Secret models. Okay, so Taylor Hill, $4 million. Jasmine Tooks, $4 million. Lily Aldridge, $4 million. Joan Smalls, four point five. million. Alessandra Ambrosio, $5 million. Lou Wen, $7 million. Gigi Hadid, $9 million. I mean, you know, I gotta say this. I'm not a big fan of the Hadid sisters. Like, they're good looking. I just, I don't know. They're whatever. Um, Kendall Jenner, ten million. Adriana Lima, ten point five million. 
And it's it's just first of all, Adriana Lima is sexy. Like I she is holy moly. Okay. But anyway, we have to understand that these that these are willing participants. If you truly believe you're being exploited in your sector, whatever you do, engineering, modeling, acting, um, fish frying, patty flipping, whatever, if you feel that you're being exploited, and if you feel that you're being mistreated, quit. It's just it's just it's just that simple. You are you are a willing participant who chooses to who chooses to work with these conditions. And there are many reasons why Charlie Charlie's Angels First, okay, let me just say this. Men are visually oriented. Okay? We all know this. People think people think, you know, People think it's the patriarchy where it's like, oh, you know, we take women and we just, you know, we celebrate their beauty because we're empowering, you know, that's all they bring to the table. No, women are tremendous. They are, they are incredible assets to civilization and to society. You can't, you can't have, you can't have society or civilization without them. They complement men. You need, you need both. But when we see when we see women, it's like, wow, you know, it's just like they're just so they're so pretty. And one thing one thing that also has to be understood about guys, we don't we do not. Um, our standard of beauty is lower than you think. If you're if you're a woman, let, just 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 hear me out here. OK, I'm going to break this down. From a guy's perspective. Us as guys. We think. We believe that women are some of the greatest things. Ever. Okay. You guys can be annoyed sometimes. And you guys can be. Emo- you guys can be. You know. Catty and stuff like that. And we find it annoying sometimes. But. We love you. Okay. And that's the rule. Not the exception. Okay. And so. It's women who tear down other women. People talk about the people talk about the fashion industry and they say, oh, you know, it's just these these white heterosexual men who made these fashion rules and stuff like that and made our clothes. Okay, first of all, that's just a stupid thought to think. Because if you look at the fashion industry, it's gay men and women who do it. Straight guys are the extreme exception in the industry. They're the, they're the extreme exception in the industry. We're not the ones designing the clothes. It's women who te- who tear each other down. If you line up, if you line up, you know, if you line up 10 women and you ask guys, okay, okay, which 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 ones would you have sex with and which ones would you not have sex with most most guys will will say that most of them are attractive there's a wide range of you know body types and body shapes um and things like that and there will be some words like there will be some words like oh yeah definitely and then there are some words like mm, yeah i still would but there will be those where we say no. It's not men who just exploit these women just for their beauty. That that's not that's not what we do. We like beauty, we admire it, it matters to us. But that's not the that's not the only thing we look for. It's women who tear each other down. Women, you know, women will say, "Oh, you know, Oh, you know, her dress was this and her heels and who does she think she is? How dare she wear that here? You know, I'm wearing the same thing. It's women who care more. Guys are seriously indifferent on on topics like this. Every day, every single day, I walk to class. And that 
and that guy in me, that basic guy in me, when I see a girl, it's like, would, okay, would you have sex with her? Yes. And I often get more, way more yeses than no's. They're not all super attractive and they're not all super ugly. I don't, I don't just say no to the ones that are super ugly. I don't, I don't do that. But there are always more yeses than no's. Our standard of beauty is not as high as you think it is. Women, we appreciate you. We, here's what you have to understand. Let me tell you something about, about your boyfriend or husband. They want to see you naked. That's one of the reasons they're with you. They find you attractive. They like you. If they didn't like you, they wouldn't stay with you and they wouldn't want to be with you. They want to see you naked. They like, they like your body. Yes, we like, yes, we see other women's bodies. And yes, we like them. But just because we, just because we see them and like them does not mean, it does not mean that we don't like you or that we appreciate you any less. If you truly believe, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop. If you truly believe that guys only go for those models that you see, you know, walking the catwalk and stuff like that, you're a dingbat. Go outside and just look at some couples. You will see guys of all body types with girls of all body types. You don't see... Everyone is not a 10. Everyone's not a 9. Everyone's not a 8. Everyone's not a 7. There are 6s, 5s, 4s. There are people. The, the standard of beauty is not, as high as you, is not as high as you think it is in men. We like you. You have no idea. You have no idea what the image of a, of a naked woman does to us. That's why, pornogra that's why pornography is so powerful to men. It's extremely visually stimulating. Anyway, just just ladies, quit quit berating yourselves and quit thinking that us men only go for certain types of go for the extreme extreme thin five ten five eleven models because that's just not what we go for. All you gotta do is just look around you. You see couples of all types around you. I'm going to say this last thing. If you are insecure about your body, if you are insecure about your body, I get it. I, I mean, I, you know, I somewhat understand how the female brain works. Again, I'm no expert, but I have read literature and stuff like that. So I do get it. But let me just say this. Your husband or your boyfriend, they want to see you naked. It's just that simple. They appreciate your body. They like you. Everything is everything is not going to be perfect. Modeling is very, very hard. A lot of it is airbrushed. Now, these women... Now, I will say this. These women, they are beautiful. And they are good-looking. With, without, without the help of, you know, airbrushing and stuff like that, okay? So they are beautiful. And they are extremely physically attractive. But, you know, you're, they, we still like, we still like, you know, I, I just, it frustrates me when I hear, when I hear women, and I will sometimes hear them in my classes, not, not often, but it's just like, oh, you know, men, men just look at women and they see a piece of meat and it's just like, you know, they only go for the ones that they believe are tens and nines and stuff like that that's just that's just so ignorant and it's so blatantly clear that that's not true women appreciate your bodies you should no you should keep it in, you know all people should keep their body in shape they need to take people need to take care of the body because you only get one you only get one so you need to do the best you know you need to do your best with what you've got Keep it in shape. Stay attractive. You know, and, and even just for yourself. 
you want to be in the best shape possible for your own benefits. You want to live as long as possible. I don't, you know, you don't want to die at 50 because you're just out of shape and you're eating bad and stuff like that. Do it for yourself. And I'm telling you, just, it, it'll, it'll work wonders. All right. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this story, I just, this Popeye's chicken, man, I still haven't had it. Is, I'm, 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 I'm coming to the assumption that this is like the cure to cancer. Because a man has been killed at Maryland Popeye's in fight linked to popular chicken sandwich. This person lost their life because of a chicken sandwich. I mean, this is this is this is just a crazy phenomenon. This is this is a crazy phenomenon. Either they're putting crack in their chicken, nicotine, or this is like, this is like the fountain of youth. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm seriously missing out. This is from CNBC. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. A man was stabbed to death outside a Maryland Popeye's in a fight over the chain's popular fried chicken sandwich. Jesus. A spokeswoman for the Prince George's Police Department said the 28-year-old, who has not been identified, was killed in a, at a restaurant in Oxon Hill outside Washington, D.C. A fight... Listen, listen to this. A fight began after someone cut in line, spokeswoman Jennifer Donnellan's, Donnellan said. For you to get that angry over anything, for that type of anger to develop into this type of violence, again, is a very sad and tragic day, Donnellan said. The fight began inside the restaurant and later moved outside. Donnellan said the man was rushed to a hospital where he later died. Wow. This is this is incredible. This is this is just unbelievable. I mean, think about it. Think about it. You lost you lose your life over a chicken sandwich? Chicken? I'm, I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't even. There's to me, there's very little worth worth losing my life for. I'll lose, I'll lose my life for my faith. I would do that. I would lose my life to protect my wife, my kids. Outside of that. There is, there, there's, there's just nothing and some friends, okay? Outside of that, there is nothing worth losing my life over, worth, worth me getting into a fight where I could possibly lose my life for it. I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I mean, what would, what would make, here's the thing, here's the thing. So, it's like this. You already know that ch this chicken sandwich is popular. We already know this, okay? So, this guy cuts in line. First of all, people don't really, people don't like cutters. We don't. Um, and so, when we do that, when, when we cut, when people cut, it's just more annoying. It's like, okay, man, like, person don't do that like you just wait your turn okay but this is a hot commodity this is a hot item people want this this sold out i think i want to say in like two weeks or like a like a week and a half i mean this is a very hot and popular commodity so you already know people seriously want this and they've been waiting for this so their desire to get it has increased. And so you're going to cut in line for a chicken sandwich. I don't know how more ridiculous this can get. I mean, I mean, 
what would you write on your tombstone? Just I I, I can't I can't even think of, I can't even think of what you would say. Just off the top of my head, I would I would put the that the Popeye's chicken sandwich just isn't worth it. That that might be what I write or something something close to that. Just just saying that it's not it's it's not worth it. Or what would be even more funny was saying it was worth it. I don't know. That's all I have to say about the story, man. But you know. I don't think I need to give this advice, but, you know, don't lose your life. And here's the thing, here's the thing. If this was like an apocalypse and food was short, I get it. Because because you gotta eat. That's not the case here. That's not the case here. It, it just, it just, don't lose your life. Don't lose your life over stupid things. Life is so This is this is probably the main reason I'm pro I'm pro life. Life is so valuable. I was having this conversation with someone the the other day. How much money could someone give you to end your life? How much money could I pay you? For you to let me kill you. There is no amount. There's none. Because that's how valuable life is. You can't you can't put a cost on it. There's no amount of money you can give. You only get one, you only get one life on this earth. That's it. You need to make the most of it. And you don't want to lose it. Over a Popeye's chicken sandwich. Come on, man. Now his family, now his friends, if he had any, they're going to go to this funeral. And they're, they're just going to be shaking their heads. They're going to be shaking their heads. They're going to be crying. They're going to be like, and how old was he? 28, 26? How old? The 28-year-old. 28. He hadn't even hit 30. And he's dead. He should still be here. In all likeliness, in all likeliness, he likely would have gotten the chicken sandwich. And even if he didn't, he would get it eventually. This is this is just stupid. This is just stupid. I can't... I don't feel sorry for this guy. I feel sorry for the family. Because they got to go to this funeral and they got to be like, we're we are gathered here today ultimately because of a chicken sandwich and that that is a funny statement but it's true people value your life it's so important it's so you only get one it is the greatest element you can have it's the it's the greatest it's the greatest opportunity that you can have to be alive, to be alive and to be in the land of the living. Don't throw it away over something stupid. Okay. Now, another person has died related to food. In Georgia, this is from fox19.com. Man using racist slurs killed in Waffle House fight in Georgia. Yep. You heard that correctly. This is a very short article. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says a man was shot to death at a Waffle House after calling other patrons racist slurs and starting a fight. Ah, The GBI says Butts County deputies... Responded Halloween night to three 911 calls that were three minutes apart. The first reported an angry customer, the second reported a fight, and the third reported shots had been fired. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. 27. Responding deputies found 27-year-old Nicholas Fanazi Bryan mortally wounded. An investigation determined that Brian was using racial slurs toward 36-year-old Robert Lewis Henderson Jr. and 39-year-old Antonio DeMarty Evans. 
Waffle House staff told Brian to leave. Then the argument became physical, police say. Police say Henderson fired a single shot at Brian, who later died at a hospital. See, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. What are you doing dying beca because of something that happened at a Waffle House? Oh, these people, man. You know, some people are just so angry and just so emotional, and they just... It, what this, what these past two show, what these past two stories show, is just how strong emotions can be, and just how influencing they can be. I mean, think about this. Think about this. You are so angry, and you are you are so for this cause. First of all, let me just say this about racial slurs. Personally, I think. Personally, I don't care. If I'm called a racial slur, I couldn't possibly care less. But it's like, but it's like, dude, are you that angry? Like, what? First of all, what are you so angry about? That you didn't get your waffle? Or you didn't get it as fast as you'd like to get it? I just, I just, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. This is this is this is just stupid. You, you lose you lose your life because you call some people some racial slurs. And remember, you know, people take I'm I'm the I in general, most people if you call them a racial slur and you are not that race, your people are going to get mad at you and people are going to be upset. Um, or you're, or you're likely to get offended. Okay, so I'm, I'm the exception. So, you know, Robert Lewis Henderson, um, fired the shot. He got so offended, and he got the, the moment got hot enough to where, um, he pulled a gun on this guy and killed him. <sighs> Personally, I don't think this was worth shooting a guy unless he was, you know, still trying to still, you know, beat you. And if he's, I gotta say this, if he acted in self-defense, I personally have no problem with this, with him, with him, you know, firing. But again, I'm gonna say this, man, just protect your life. It is so valuable. Just don't chuck it away because of some stupid reason. A Popeye's chicken sandwich and a Waffle House. Just great reasons to die. Just fantastic reasons to die. 